Importance of Natural Sciences Collections for Biocultural Research, a view from the Global South. Here we are presenting a case study based on the experience of our Archaeology Lab to discuss the relevance of natural science collections for biocultural research from a situated perspective from the Global South. At the crossroads between social and natural sciences and intersected by historical sciences, archaeology is key to unraveling past human environmental interactions, including the long-term roots of the Anthropocene and natural science collections play a key role in those investigations on the past. Also, they are a significant reservoir of regional biodiversity, which is part of our biotic heritage and is key to preserving the face of its future loss. Both modern and archaeological biotic collections are also part of our biocultural heritage, as they inform of past and present human environmental interactions. Some reflections based on the work carried out at our lab will be shown to illustrate this. The laboratory of zooarchaeology and taphonomy of arid areas belonging to both the National Council for Scientific and Technical Research and the National University of Córdoba is part of the public academic system in Argentina and it is focused in long-term human-animal interactions and in the formation of the archaeological record and that of the fossil record generally. To serve this aim, the LASTA hosts a number of zooarchaeological collections when they are under study. They consist mainly of bone, but also of other materials like skin, hair, feathers, arthropods, exoskeletons, feces, bird pellets, and other faunal materials, some of them made into artifacts as well as traces. They are a valuable source of information of past interactions between humans and other animals, and also on past geological and environmental conditions. To help interpret this archaeological record, the NASTA has built a modern reference collection consisting mainly of bones, but also of other faunal materials and traces like bite, digestion and weathering bone modifications. Although not collected to the tame, this reference collection is a testimony of the biodiversity of the modern world and, as it is changing day by day, of recent historical biodiversity as well. It is worth noting that natural science collections which are not attractive to the general public in terms of mainstream interests are harder to justify in the hosting institutions. Yet, supposedly non-attractive remains may be of great interest to some public. Feces, for instance, are fascinating to young children. And even if not, they have great value for research and as natural heritage. Following with this example, feces are fabulous bio bio biological reservoirs. Persuading institutions to preserve them is often difficult, especially in institutions lacking enough funds, like many here in the Global South. It is not just a matter of size, but also one of the diversity of the collections that is of concern. Another aspect of collection preservation relates to the need of applying cleaning and preservation methods that are suitable and that allow biotic materials to preserve as long as possible. This demands expensive supplies and in our lab they are sometimes difficult to access. Besides biotic material-friendly elements such as plastic, so common in our labs, are not environmentally friendly. This is a dilemma we need to discuss in depth, especially in the Global South and other lower-income areas, where we often can only access inexpensive materials. Natural and biocultural collections in the Global South thus face some common challenges with others, and also some specific ones, like the shortage of resources for managing them. In this context, imagining original strategies is crucial, like demonstrating our institutions the importance of these collections as natural and cultural heritage by involving the general public. Intercultural experiences are being increasingly valued, as are interinstitutional networks and collaborations in which expertise, materials and other resources are shared. Given their value for historical biodiversity and past human environmental interactions, it is crucial to preserve these collections and to do it in the countries where they are generated, which is often more difficult in the lower right ones, like most in the Global South. Decolonizing not just cultural and historical collections, but also natural ones is crucial, as sovereign information on regional biotas and their history and role for human societies should belong to their peoples. Thank you very much.